I'm good to go when you are, mate. Yeah, all yeah. good. Well, obviously, thanks so much for agreeing to speak to us. Um, we obviously wanted to speak to you after the, the study we'd done that found that there was more Manchester United Academy graduates across the Premier League than, than any other club, and also the fact that 10 Academy graduates from this club played for the, the senior team last year. As someone in your position, how much pride do you get from those statistics? I think for the whole club, it's massive pride. I think um, for myself, you know, it's nice being named to it, but there's a lot more people that have done a lot more for that than myself. Obviously, I'm new to the job, and... A lot of people over the years have, have have helped to get the players where they are. You know, you think of all the, the good work Paul McGuinness did, Brian McClare did, Jim Ryan, um, and, and a lot more names there that have got these players to where they are now. So, you know, the baton has been passed on to me, so it's up to me and, and my staff to try and um, you know keep that that, um, that ball rolling. Really, it's been something that this club sort of had a, a tradition of. You go back to the Busby days, and obviously when when you came through in the early nineties as well, and it's been passed on now. Is it something that the club's keen to, to keep that identity as well? I think they've got to. I think the club, you know, it, it won't allow for no um, homegrown players. I think the, the club's always had a history of going and breaking transfer records, going and getting the best players around the world. But they've also been known for developing their own players that help the the superstars come into the club and 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 bed them in and and teach them about the club and about the area and about the you know the history of the club and I think that's important to have that. I think the, the, the teams that have been successful over the years, right back to the Busby Bears, have always had people that have known the club and and grew up with the club in the in, in the blood really and um, and it's great when you see players from you know other countries come in and, and end up you know being part of that family really. You know, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer comes to mind straight away and he comes from a total different country and and. When you speak about someone like that nowadays, you still think of him as a Man United person and a Man United you know, player, and, and that's what we pride ourselves on. So, hopefully, we can keep that going and, and, and keep the you know, the core of the club homegrown and, and, and with a love for the club. There's a lot of big clubs in this area, and I guess if there's a talented kid, mm. they might have might a choice of a few clubs. What, what do you say to parents about what you, you can do for kids when they come here? I think you just got to be honest with them. I think um, personally, I wouldn't sit in front of parents and slag any other clubs off. I think there's a lot of good clubs around the area. Um, a lot of clubs all over England, in fact, I've got great facilities and, and good academies and good coaches. But um, So we're all on a par with that, if I'm honest, facility-wise. Um, people will say some are better than others, but if I'm being honest, uh, for me, I think a lot of clubs are, are pretty much on the same level. But when it comes to chances and pathways to the first team, you just have to be honest with them and say, this club gives you a chance. Um, you can look at people in the eye and tell them that, and that's a fact, that's a truth. And then this report that's come out now, it backs that up, really. But... It's, um, it's, a, it's a fact that this club does give people chances, it does create players, it does um, make these parents boys who were looking at them and speaking to them, footballers, and give them a great career. Hopefully you get them to this club and they become you know, worldwide names at this club and, and, and stay here for 10, 15 years. Um, but in many cases they, they don't make it here because it's few and far between do, but they go and get careers in the in the Premier League and other clubs, uh, in the Championship and League One and have a really good life and have a really good grounding and, and they're still part of you know, our family and they still spoke about um, with pride and, and when you speak to the managers that they go and play for, they're always saying you can tell a Man United boy because the way they, they're respectful, the way they're brought up, the way they um, conduct themselves on and off the pitch and and just the way they are as human beings. So I think that is a massive bonus for our academy staff and all the coaches and, and teachers and, and people that have worked with them all the way through their career, really. As, as proud as you are to see you know, people like Marcus and, and Jesse come through <coughs> to the senior team, there's also, I guess, for the academy staff, a great sense of pride when you see someone like Michael Keane mm. or Tom Heaton or someone who, who's left but still gone on to have a hugely successful senior career elsewhere. Yeah, I think when you're in the academy football and... You know, I'm not trying to be a guru here, I'm only not long into it, but when I speak to some people that have been here for years and years and doing it for many years, and they they take as much pride in that as they do against a Marcus or a Jesse. Obviously, the you know, Nirvana is to get a Jesse and a, and a Marcus in, and that's the, the, that's the pinnacle, really, and that's what we try to strive for, and that's what we're judged on. But when you see somebody lifting the, you know, the Premier League and Danny Drinkwater, Danny Simpson, you know, these players that have been at this club and they're, they're winning Premier Leagues, and... It's, it's massive, there's it's no other club that I know that does that and for that, for, for our academy staff that's that's a massive, massive thing and it's because in academy you, you can't control who goes into the first team, it's, that's the manager's choice, that's his prerogative, how he wants to play it and we're fortunate over the years to have managers that give youngsters a chance and it looks like with, with Jose he's going to do that as well. But you can't control it, you know, you can only get them so far and then it's up to the manager to pick them so um, academy staff can't be judged on 
who goes into our first team too much, um, but they can be judged on developing players and, and providing players into the Premier League, into the, the Championship, into League One, and that's what we do, and, and that's what they, 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 they pride themselves on. You obviously came through the system in the early 90s. What's, what's changed since then, and what's still similar you can still see now? Um, for me, obviously the building, the size of it, the, the amount of players that come through the door, the agents, the, all the other stuff that goes with it is different, but ultimately it's not different. You know, The training regime is the same, um, the system is the same, the way they do the, um, the set plays, the way they do the, the, the possession, the way they do the small sided games, it's all the same, it just evolves over years. So the hard work, the ethical things that um, you try and put into young players, you know, you try and make them good human beings and, and that, that stands them in good stead when they get there to the top because you don't want somebody who's going to get to the top and, and think I'm here now and that's it, I'm going to go and buy a nice car, a nice house and go to a few opening parties and think they're footballers because sooner or later they're going to go back downhill. So in that sense it hasn't changed, you know, you've got to be humble at this club, you've got to be prepared to, to get a bit of stick, you've got to be prepared to be brave and, and, and play it in front of 75,000 people and expect it to win. Um, and in that sense the club hasn't changed, the club's changed in the scale of it, with the amount of people that work here now, the amount of players that come through. But to be, get to where, from, from a nine year old boy to the Man United's first team, the process is exactly the same, it's hard work, it's hard work, it's hard work and then it's listening to your coaches and it's being a good person. And, and knowing what to do and the right time to do it. And they're going to make mistakes because kids are kids. You know, I've made mistakes when I was a kid. Um, a lot of the players do. But it's learning from their mistakes and, and, and going the right way and not having too many dips. If you have too many dips and people lose patience with you and then it's time to move on. How important was Sir Alex in terms of what he laid when he first came in and how that's been carried on through now? I think he was massive. I think he was the, um, the start of it all, if I'm honest. You know, a lot of people can get a lot of adulation from the, the, the youth team, you, know, you, you think of Eric Harrison, Nobby Styles, Brian Kidd, Jim Ryan, then in the later days, you know, Paul McInnes, Warren Joyce, all these people who have, have, have been successful with them and even on the, 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 the education side, you've got Dave Bushell, Tony Whelan, I mean they're all massive but if it weren't for Sir Alex, this, that would have never happen, happened, you know, he, he come in and said this isn't right, the youth, the youth set up is not right, the scout is not right. The biggest club in the world, the biggest club in the area, and we're being out for on the scouting fields and on the local parks. At Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This can't happen, and he changed all that. And um, like I say, the rest is history. Really, he got the fruitions of that and got the players through, and and he, he brought them from people playing in the local parks for the club team to playing for Man United and winning things, which is <laughs> it's unbelievable. Really, you think about it. I don't think it'll ever happen again. Mm. I think. Um, Someone's come and do that and risk his job um, for young kids is, is someone's got to be very confident in what they do and and time scale now for managers doesn't doesn't happen like that so hopefully it'll happen and we've got to keep trying to keep doing that but he changed the whole the whole outlook of of the club and even though a lot of people hell of a lot of people take a lot of credit for what they've done and, and how they've done it and rightly so if it went for the manager putting it in place all them years ago it, it wouldn't have happened as you say the, the game's changed a lot now in terms of money and, and the way that the managers the amount of time they have now do you ever think there'll be a sort of another class of 92 where we see five or six players from one academy come through and, and break into the first team and have a long run as you did they could do yeah they, they, we hope for that because when i go and watch the kids play i look at players that were that are miles better than me when i was a kid um better than scolzi better than bex better than nev better than wes brown better than john o'shea better than darren fletcher and so on and so on and so on there's a lot of talent down there, um, but it's not just down to talent. <laughs> like I said, it's down to how you are and how you deal with, you know, your downs and how you deal with your ups as well. Because if you you got to be able to be on a straight path all the way, whether you're playing well or bad, you got to keep your emotions on a straight line at this club. And and also it's luck. It's we're in the right place at the right time. Um, I always go back to when we started playing. It was we got a bit of luck because the, f the five foreigners rule. So we were playing in Europe before we was actually playing in in the Premier League to be honest with you so you need that and you also need the right manager at the right time to give you a chance And so we can have it ability wise it can happen because there's a lot of a lot a lot of ability in this academy and in other academies um, will it happen or not for six players to play together it's, it's hard because you also need the the good pros that are going to allow that so you, you Steve Bruce's your Roy Keane's your Peter Schmeichel's your Brian Robson's Gary Parsons Dennis Irwin all these players um, if it weren't for them We'd have been dead on our feet because, you know, we get a lot of, a lot of press about the class of '92 and stuff. But 
ultimately if it weren't for them pros that were around at that time we wouldn't even been here speaking to you now because young kids need a lot of help when they're playing for first team and they were really good human beings that helped us and, and then when we th thought we was getting a bit too cocky they, they swiped us down a bit as well so you need that so we were just really lucky we worked hard don't get me wrong and we, we, we worked hard from 11 years of age really but you got to have a bit of luck to have the right people alongside you and the right manager and, and obviously the right timing. And how important is it to see to see people like if you're a youngster and I see people like Marcus and, and mm. Jesse and know that there is that pathway and there are people that can get to the senior team and stay there as they've done? It's important for a lot of reasons. Um, it's important because it's, it's their time now to keep the traditions going at the club. They've got, whether Marcus is 19 and Jesse's only 22, 23, it's the, they've got to tell the people about the club. They've got to take the reins. They've got there's nobody else. You know, Paul Pogba's got to be part of that as well because he knows the club. Um, Michael Carrick's still here, obviously. He knows the club inside out. Um, it's their time now to tell these new new boys you know, who we're paying a lot of money for. They've got to incorporate them into the club, into the belief, into the ways of the, the, the community, into the you know, the city. They've got the, it's their, whether they're young or not, it's their job. They've got to do that. and. Um, so that's massive for the club and, and for the, the first team, but for the academy way, for us to be able to look at the kids and say Marcus was here and Jesse was here from eight, nine years of age, that's massively important for me when I go and speak to parents and I look them in the eye and say, it can happen because it's, it's there, they're doing it now. Um, so for all different reasons, they've got, <laughs> they don't know it, but they've got a massive thing on the shoulders, they've got to deal with the first team, playing week in, week out and winning things, they've got to deal with the press. They've got to deal with the social media side, they've got to deal with the manager, they've got to deal with the international things. But there's this little thing on the back of the shoulders that I don't think they realise yet. They've got to carry the club as well and they've got to keep the tradition going. And um, that's massive. And for fans as well, obviously, to see one of their own on the pitch, do you think that's still cherished as much as it's ever been, yeah. even with big signings coming in? Yeah, I think it is. I think if you ask the, um, you know, the diehard fans, I think they would give anything to have local boys playing. They want to win, so you need the superstars as well. You need the big, you know, everyone likes a superstar coming in and wow, it's Latan or it's Pogba or whoever it's going to be. It's great to have big signings like that. Um, but you need the local lads coming through. Not local, that's the wrong word. They need uh, academy lads coming through um, to, to have a bit of pride and say he's one of our own. And we've seen him when he was 14 and 16 and 18, and now we've seen him at 13. Um, and to be fair, the, the fans give you a lot more leeway because we. We were shocking in some games when we was playing and, and they stand, stand by you because of that. So it's a bit of to and fro in and you need them in, in, in the squad and in the team. What do you, you think about the, the state of, of youth football in general and the sort of gap between academies and the first team and, and how that pathway is being managed just across the country? Um, tricky question really. I think youth football in general is up and down. I think you can play some great games. You know, I've seen some good, really good games every now and again. And you can also see some games where you can see the kids are mates, they've been playing against each other from eight. So you'll have a City, Man United, Liverpool, all the local teams and, and the same eight year olds in different teams are playing against each other right away up to the 16 and 18. And they become friends really, you know, you, you can see them in the warm up and they're like talking to when they play at England with them. And that happens, don't get me wrong, it happened when we was playing, but there just seems to be a bit of a easy ozy pathway for the not pathways, an easy ozy step up to the next level because the, the comfort zone and at Man United we try and give them pull them out of the comfort zone so we'll take them abroad we'll take them on a lot of tours and get them playing against Italian teams Spanish teams South American teams challenging them make them realise that you know football's not always the same you know sometimes you come up against total different teams that play different systems you play against teams that play long ball game you play against teams that want to play pure football you play against teams that will kick you and fight you and kick you again and again and again you play against teams that will outrun you um, so our boys have got to be aware that they have to adapt to every football match because when you're playing at this club at the top level you have to adapt because one minute you could be playing against a Wimbledon back in the early 90s the next minute you could be playing against Barcelona on, uh, in the new camp and you can't be just you know, one way in football you have to be able to change and develop and, and we do that well I think um, in this club per um, personally we do that well I think youth football should for me give clubs time gaps in the season to go and go on tour or go places or even if, you, if some clubs can't afford to take the clubs away make a little in-house tournament with different clubs and different football styles and and don't coach kids too much at young age you know say go and work out yourself okay you're going to play a footballing team in that game and then for 
I don't know, 25 minutes each way and then an hour's rest and you're going to play a long ball team there for 25 minutes each way and then you're going to rest and you'll play a mixture in that team and, and let them work out itself because a lot of kids are coached too much. I see they coach too much and and I, I, I didn't come into an academy until I was probably 11, 12 and most of the lads at my age group didn't. And nowadays they're coming in at nine, eight and they're being coached and coached and coached and drilled and pigeonholed into a position. I also think that's hard because you look at a lot of successful players who play Premier League, they didn't start out in a position that they're playing in now. So you think of Gary Neville was a midfielder, ended up playing centre half and then right back and was, in my opinion, the best right back the club's ever had. So pigeonholing kids and coaching them too much at an early age, for me and for our academy, we believe it isn't right. So you've got to be careful with it, really. Hey, just one last one for me. How important do you think loans are? Because of it? there's various examples. Jesse had a lot of loans mm. before he sort of made the breakthrough here. Marcus has gone straight into the first team. I think from the class of '92, Beckham was the only one that, that mm. went out on loan. But it's some people seem to benefit from it. Some people don't. What, what's your view on it generally? I think it's a tricky one. I think it depends what you are as a person and what level you're at. If you're getting a lot of football at your, your parent club, you don't need to go out on loan. I think if you're getting the right level of football and you're, you're doing well and you're, you're progressing well, no need to go on loan because you want to put play the Man United people as well as players. So if you go out of the building for a year and then another six months after that, you're not influencing their personality, you're not influencing them as people. So I think that's tricky. But if you get into the spectrum where you're a bit older, like I remember Tom Cleverley went out on a few loans, um, he was a late developer and weren't getting the right level of football here. You can go out on loan then and it might benefit you. So it's ups and downs with it for me. It's a tricky one because I think the rules as well are strange. I think if if you took me on loan when I'm 18 and I go and you like me and I'm playing and three weeks into it you get sacked and a new manager comes in and doesn't like me, I'm stuck there for a season not playing football. So for me the rules need to change on loan players. If you go out on loan, um, and the manager gets changed, you should be able to come back to your parents' club. Um, so there are all these things we have to work out before we let players go out on loan. It's a discussion we have between our staff, myself, um, the medical people and sports science staff. We make a decision, is it the right thing to do or isn't it? And you hope it is, but it's not always. The, it's not, it doesn't always work. So it's one that we can't really control unless we, it's perfect, we don't let them go out. Mm. Just one last one I've just remembered. Um, obviously the 10 players, there's quite a few that played the last game of the, of the season, mm -hmm. that was their first appearance. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to them about about cracking it on a regular basis and, and how they can do that? Well, first of all, that was good for the, for them. You know, they worked hard for all the season. They had a lot of ups and downs in the reserves. Um, Warren left, obviously, and um, I took over and that was a bit of a change for them. Um, the squad was, the depth was really small, so that was a change for them. Um, so the ones that got rewarded from hard work was was really nice to see at the end. But the advice you give them with that is, in fairness, they all played because the the manager had a massive game two week down the line and didn't want any more injuries. So they have to go back to square one again. They have to go back to training hard, working hard. Forget about that now. That's that's happened. It was great. Parents loved it. I loved it. You know, I had a couple of weeks of on a higher playing for Man United's first team, but realistically. I, I'm not at that level yet and I need to work harder and harder and harder to get there and stay there. Because it's alright getting there and playing one or two games, you're staying there for a course of, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years and then, then you you really are a player. But at the minute, for the lads that have done it, great, shake their hand, well done, pat them on the back, but now that's gone. You've got to get back to working hard and training and playing. If that means back with the reserves, then so be it, you've got to do that and you've got to get up to there again and work the way back up. and. And that's a bit of advice that I give them that, you know, don't think you're there because you're not. Until you play probably 50 games, you're not there. So you need to keep working hard. And Darren Fletcher said he only thought he'd made it once he'd played four or five years, won multiple titles and then he could buy his fast car. And that. Yeah, I think Darren's right. I think that's why he's had a great career and he's still playing to this level now at his age. Um, uh, yeah, he's right. I think I remember um, Eric Harrison never said so you've made it until we won the treble and he actually said I think you've, done, you've actually made it now lads so that was nice to hear so <clears throat> yeah it's, it's a tricky one especially with modern football and, the, and social media and everything now the kids play 10 games and they're, they're, they're put on a, a pedestal like the superstars and I feel sorry for them because any young kid will get carried away with that and yet it's up to us as coaches as you know, people that have played at the level and say listen calm yourself down it's, you're not there yet you've got a long way to go um, so yeah, hopefully they, they realise that and they know they're not there yet and they've got to work hard and hopefully get another chance pretty soon. That's brilliant. Good.